Hey guys, I'm Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Let's take a look at this. Portable power, it's something we all need when we're out mobile or operating portable. Whether it's running a power supply to power that HF radio or a cooler to keep your adult beverages chilled, we all need power when we're out and about. This is the P700 from Hepway, and I want to talk about it today. This is a portable device that provides up to 700 watts of AC power as well as USB charging A and USB-C. It has a cigarette lighter port and can be charged directly off of solar power as well as from your vehicle. Now full disclosure, our friends at Hepway sent this into the channel for review. My opinion on it is going to be my own opinion regardless of that fact. There will be links in the description below where you can purchase this on Amazon or directly from the vendor. Those links will help out the channel and I appreciate it if you do. Regardless, you're going to get my unbiased opinion on this device. Let's jump inside and take a closer look at the Hepway P700. Okay, let's take a close-up look now at the Hepway. This is the Hepway P700 portable power station. And this is the same one we were looking at outside, but I thought we should take a close-up look at everything we have on this device. First and foremost, we have input, and that is a way to charge it. The Hepway comes with a 12 volt car style charger that we can use. It also comes with a wall wart, well, giant brick style charger. Either one of those will work to charge the device. We have, of course, our LED light on it. Uh, this artifact here, it is not actually flickering like that. That is a camera thing. I can't make that go away. And that tells us, of course, when we turn this on, our statistics, our input and output power, and how much runtime we have and what the battery status is. We have the light on, so we press it again, we get brighter, then we get flashing, that's SOS, then we have strobe, and then we cut it, and then we have breathing, and if we long press it, that disables the light function. So we have DC 12 volts output, which gives us output on these ports, this port here rather, excuse me. That is our only DC output port. That turns it off. And then here is our AC output, and again that turns that on, and then shows us that we have DC turned on, AC turned on, so on and so forth. Everything is turned on at this point, so we're going to try and cut all that off. Then if we have, that's lit, so I'm going to press it, long press it, and now it's off, that's off, and it turns off the screen. And then here, this enables our USB ports. So on the USB ports, we have two USB 2 ports that are 10 watts, 5 volts at 2.4 amps, so it's more like 12 watts. Uh, and then we have a up to 60 watt PD compatible port using a USB-C connector. And then we have a 16 watt USB 3 uh, standard A connectors. These three are all the standard A connectors and then that's USB-C. So this will output up to 60 watts PD. And according to the manual, uh, it will do all the things I just mentioned and it lists all that right here. It also says what our charging time is, our max charging voltage, the rated capacity and amp hours of this particular device. What our actual battery capacity is, which is 577 watt hours or 156,000 milliamp hours. It's a lithium ion battery. It's black and silver, the basic outside dimensions. Our capacity in amp hours, which is 39 amp hours. Charging temperature, battery protections. This has over discharge, over temperature, low temperature, over current, sensor disconnect protection, and communications offline protection. So if the BMS has an issue, the device will cut off, which is awesome. It takes care of protecting itself. I like that. Then here's our USBs, and it tells us what those are. The USB has overload and short circuit protection. And then our uh, AC output is going to be 120 volts, plus or minus 5 volts. 60 hertz power, this is for the US market. And it gives us 700 watts of continuous power or 1000 watts peak. We'll look at that in a second. That comes from these two um, outlets. 
it is not 700 watts on each outlet it is 700 watts total on those so you cannot plug in you know two things that run three or four hundred watts a piece it needs to be under 700 watts the peak lets you have a, up to a thousand watts of startup or inrush current on whatever device you're you're powering up so if you're using this with something like a drill for example it should be able to handle it and we'll test that with a drill I have here in just a second just to see that is probably the thing I have that I would use this for the most outside is some kind of power tools uh, in a situation where I don't have to carry a generator, I can just grab this thing and, and take care of business with it. So then we have our DC input, which is the cigarette lighter port, and uh, our DC output, rather, and that is 12 volts at 10 amps, so 120 watts out of the cigarette lighter, which is about standard for these kind of connections, typical what you'd find in a, in a car. It's not called the cigarette lighter anymore, it's the power port or power point. And then our light output and how much power it uses and the temperature range for discharge and storage on the device. And then at the beginning of the manual here, it does show us um, the various displays and what they're showing us up here. It gives us any statuses with flashing lights and what lights will be on during what function or error code if you have one of those, how to charge it with the adapter. Now, something interesting, speaking of charging, the DC charge on this is 18 to 25 volts, 5 amps. So we can use this directly off of a solar panel. So if you have a solar panel set up that you want to use to charge this, no charge controller required. This takes care of it itself because of the voltage range. You can plug this into your typical consumer level solar panel and charge it that way. So it has multiple ways to charge it, which is awesome. You can use the power brick on wall power, the cigarette lighter plug, of course, and then you can also plug directly uh, into solar with it, which is pretty awesome. And I like the size of this device. It's not very heavy. It weighs, I don't know, mm, 10, 12 pounds, something like that. The device is not expensive. I will put a link to it in the description of the video below. There will be an Amazon affiliate link doesn't cost you any more. It does support the channel. Also, there might be some other links from the vendor directly with a, a discount, and those are probably affiliate links as well. This device is excellent. I like it for its size and portability. And right now, let's take a quick look. I didn't do this outside, but let's plug in a drill and let's turn on our AC power which is on. You can kind of see the light there when I block the camera lights. And so we're at 99% charge. Now one thing I do want to mention on any of these devices, this takes power when I'm not even doing anything because now it's turned on the inverter. So there's power going to the inverter to run the inverter as well, plus obviously the LED display, which is very clear and bright, very easy to read. And you see here with all these lights on for videoing this, you can still see that clearly. And again, that flashing is an artifact of the camera. It doesn't actually flash in real life. So I have a 120 volt drill here, good old Ryobi, and we're gonna fire this up and see how it goes. So 325 watts on full battery, or full, yeah, full throttle. Let me do it one more time and I'm gonna key it up fast here. And you see there, it did jump up to about 400 there for a second. So that's the motor starting up. That's our inrush current I was talking about. I like the display. It shows you everything that's going on with the device. If I had one critique is it does not show me um, amperage that I'm using. It does however show input wattage which you'd see when you charge and then it shows output wattage. And when you're using these the ratings they give you are in watts so these are rated for 700 watts so output wattage is 
is what you need. Of course, it shows you the current run time and then the percentage of the battery that we've used up. And this is a pure sine wave inverter. So what you can see here is on the AC output, we have a beautiful looking sine wave at 60 hertz. There is nothing wrong with that at all, which what that means is this inverter is great for running stuff that's sensitive to smooth power input on the AC side. So there's no problem at all running sensitive electronics on this or anything with the motor. And you saw I already ran the drill on it and the drill ran great. Guys, that is all that I'm going to have for this video. This is the Hepway P700 power station. You can get this at various places. And again, I will have links to all that below. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day, 73.